I have some bad news. Miracle's not feeling well today. Her ears are pissing her off and she's extra grumpy. So we tried several times to make her sit on the tower and she got very upset. And one time literally just rolled off and landed on her back. Poor thing. So, um, so Miracle is not with us tonight. Aww. So I have a couple of special guests taking her place. Hippos. Yes. The horrible, horrible things that I, I, that make uh -huh. me. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm a happy hippo. <laughs> Stop. Stop. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> oh, wait. I like big hugs. I cannot lie. Oh. Well, all right. Yes, then. Guess, there is a god. Dying. I guess that's all she's got these days. <laughs> she forgot the words to the rest of the song. I like big hugs. <laughs> Can I lie? <laughs> Maybe she needs new batteries. Yeah, she might need some new batteries. Well, I don't want the entire rest of the show, the fucking hippo, to pop up and... Uh, you just want me to do this for half an I hour? Like Look what I have. Oh, floofy cat. I have a sleepy floofy cat. I have no small cat. She is not feeling so good. And she literally just like at one point just tipped over and rolled off the tower and landed. Oh. And went, I was like, okay, you could go. You can go. I'm sorry. Look at this thing. He's so floofy. He's He's like, why did you wake me for this? Hey, why am I awake? There we go. Why are you, why are you exploiting me? I'm exploiting you because everyone thinks you're adorable. Oh, I I hate them. He doesn't really. I don't think he's he's that quite that bright. No, I'm just I'm just tired, man. What have you been doing to be tired? I've been sleeping. It's hard work. It's hard work, is it? I've been chasing my toys, and then I've been sleeping, and then I was eating, and that's really tiring. What are you staring at? He's just staring off in this one direction. At the ghosts? That's the other thing I've been doing. I've been protecting you from ghosts. You have no idea how many ghosts you have in here, man. You want to go back like, to sleep? Do you like you're really, you sleep? You are really fucking lucky you have me. Do you want me to let you sleep, little buddy? Yes. Otherwise, how am I supposed to be up at 5 a.m. making a lot of noise when you're oh, trying to sleep? What are you doing? Oh, I, what are you doing? I got to rest up for that. You're made of liquid, cat. I try to, I'm trying to pick you up so I can put you gently back in your bed and you keep like slipping and sliding all over the place. Here, come on. There you go. Back in the kitty hammock. There you can sleep. There you cats, go. Cats are, in fact, able to just turn themselves into a liquid. They're a gelatinous creature. They were furry ooze. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, now that we've gotten the cuteness out of the way, it's time for the horror. See, see how we, we set you up there. We give we, we give you something adorable to yeah. soften the blow because to soften the blow. What's coming is is not good. And this week, oh, I hope none of you guys like Rice Krispie treats. Is all I'm going to say. I love Rice Krispie treats. Do not ruin Rice Krispie Treats. Oh, I'm so sorry, Tara. I'm so sorry. We'll get there. How I, I've, I've ruined, I'm going to ruin breakfast. I'm sorry, everybody, but let's- Just don't get, fuck with St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is coming. Let's get to the intro. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it on back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And this week, now you know it's rare, I, do, I, I don't normally do stories where people get hurt, unless, the caveat is, they're the only people who got hurt, they didn't die, and it was due to their own... And they kind of deserved it. Well, not deserve, but they kind of did it to themselves. They have no one to blame, but 
themselves. So we're going to start with, okay, you know that whole story in the, in the Bible about Daniel and the lion? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's, <gasps> that's definitely a do not try this at home. Christian prophet loses his buttocks to a hungry lion while trying to prove God would save him. Alec Nidwani thought he was filled with the Holy Spirit when he decided to challenge lions at the Kruger National Park. Zion Christian Church prophet was at a park with fellow church members when, according to Ghana Web, he went into a trance and began speaking in tongues. The group approached the pride of lions while they munched happily on an antelope, but that's when Nidwani ran toward the lion. Now, on the list of things you should not do. No. When it comes to lions, is run at lions. They don't like that. Once he realized what was happening, Nidwani made an about face and immediately ran away. Fortunately, lions are fast and fierce animals. And one of the lions snapped her paws on him. Nidwani sustained injuries to his buttocks. Now, lest you think, lest you, lest you all lose faith, I want you to know that God did intervene here. God did intervene and literally kicked that dumb boy's ass. Smacked his ass off. I don't know how old he is. Smacked that, his ass off. Literally spanked his ass for being dumb. It's like that joke, the guy's caught in the flood and like a boat comes up. Jump in, we'll save you. No, no, God's going to save me. And then a helicopter comes and come on, we'll save you. No, God's going to save me. And then he dies and he gets to heaven and he's like, God, why didn't you save me? And God's like, what are you talking about? I sent a boat and I sent a helicopter. Like, Black God, God's not going to save you from your own stupidity. Black Raptor in the channel said he had his ass handed to him. Exactly. Did and that... That was the intervention of God. That was God going, don't be arrogant. Nidwani said, I thought the Lord wanted to use me to show his power over animals. Is it not we were given dominion over all creatures of the earth? And God instead used you to teach a very important lesson about humility and not being a moron. He was eventually stitched up and discharged after spending the night in the hospital. So you did, in fact, do God's work. They had to sew his ass back on. Do you remember Bloom <laughs> County? The little penguin opus. Every yes. now and then his ass would fall off. Yep. They had to sew his ass back on. <laughs> He's lucky. That is, I mean, he's lucky. Okay. He's lucky, that's all that happened. Jamie BC in the channel. Turning the other cheek doesn't work like that. <laughs> that's, that's not the cheek they mean. <laughs> yeah, they sew his ass back on. <laughs> oh, we God. just wonder sometimes if God looks down at us and is like, this is not what I had in mind. I can imagine God was going, wait, no, what? What? No, I didn't say. No, I'm not, no. I, I, what are you doing? Like, do you oh. wonder that sometimes if God's just like chilling on a cloud somewhere, just going, I don't know how they could fuck it up so bad. I made it so easy. I made it so easy. Why are you in? Why are you invo involving me in this? I don't want to be involved in this. I gave you all knowledge and put you in charge of the whole world. And, and you fucked it up utterly. How and, is that possible? And now you have to have your ass sewn back on. Man, you imagine the people in his in his church are gonna be like, okay, yeah, but you remember that time they had to sew your ass back on? Yeah. Alec, come on. God is speaking through me. Yeah. Is it through the hole in your ass? <laughs> Cause I don't know oh. if that's God. All right, so our next story, one of the most vital elements of a heist of any kind whatsoever is 
The getaway driver. The getaway car, which should not be a taxi. Yeah, because it's it's vitally important. It's vital that the person who is getting you away from the crime is actually invested in getting you away from the crime. Yeah. And that would not fall in the category of Uber. <gasps> Irico police say woman used called Uber as getaway car after attempted store theft. Richmond, Virginia, and it's Walmart. A would-be Walmart thief found herself in hot water after investigators said she tried to get creative with her getaway ride. Ivani Jones was charged with larceny and lying to police after authorities say she called an Uber after trying to steal from the superstore. Iroko police said the suspect never made it far, nor did she make off with the items she tried to walk out of the store with. According to police, Jones placed a few items in her shopping cart at the Walmart. Stores any theft team approached her, but officers said she ditched the goods. Police then said the suspect went to a nearby business and came out wearing a change of clothes, probably because she didn't want to get caught. Then the suspect stepped into an Uber car. Police then pulled over the car just down the road and nabbed the suspect. The thing about an Uber driver is they are paid to do one thing, get you from point A to point B. And they, they're using their own car to do it. Yeah. And so they if you commit a fucking crime in their car, their car gets impounded as a crime scene or evidence. And they do not have any vested interest in keeping your ass out of jail. Nope. See, if you get like a getaway driver, like a proper criminal getaway driver, they have a vest. They get. They're getting a cut. Right. They're they're part of the, they're part of of the whole. Or they at least know you and right. you know have a reason to give a shit if you get yourself incarcerated. The Uber driver pretty much is like. Fuck this shit. I, I I don't I didn't sign up for this crap. This is one of the things that makes Uber a little scary, like for everybody. Like I think Uber is a good idea. I've used it. Uh I know you don't feel great about Uber, and I know it is it does have its problems. Oh, New yes. York, it's a big problem for the taxi industry. But one of the things that makes it really scary is like if you're an Uber driver, like you're on your own. You know, like something oh, happens yeah. to you, you pick up some fucking psycho. It's you and your car. Oh, yeah. You, you are, as far as Uber is concerned, you have to do what they say, when they say to maintain good standing. But the minute you are, you, you get in any sort of trouble, you're an independent contractor. Right. You're on, your ass is on your own. And vice versa. Like, I've taken Ubers by myself. But I guess it's the same as getting in a cab. Like, if I get in a cab myself, who knows if that cabbie's a fucking psycho. And it's just going to drive me off. Into but at least the cab is registered, has a number. Like, if they... An Uber is some fucking dude's car. Yep. You know? Just some fucking dude's car. Did you car. hear that fucking psycho in Michigan who shot up a bunch of people in between picking up Uber? Oh, yeah. He claimed, yeah. He, he claimed the Uber app made him do it. He said Uber possessed him and made him kill. So now Uber's fucking self-aware. And now we've got Skynet on our hands. <sighs> well. I told you all the robots were coming. How about we uh, we move on to a good handy dose of schadenfreude? Um, th there's been something going on at the local and state level of government for a while now. It's been um, these uh, conservative slash libertarian slash... Tea Party representatives moving in and, and trying to dismantle government. <laughs> government bad. Don't want go government, government, government. I'm always government. amused by politicians that want to, that like run on a basis of hating the government. Cause I'm like, then why are you looking for a job in it? If it's so terrible. Well, in, in this case, we're talking about West Virginia and apparently there was a law in place to protect consumers Preventing the sale and consumption or, or the sale of, you know, raw milk. It's the, yes. the, the, the pasteurization was kind of, you know, kind of a vital thing. So they, the, they uh, to government bad, they passed a law to say, you can sell raw milk if you want. And then they had a glass of raw milk to celebrate. 
and found out why that was a bad idea. And found out why the raw milk was a bad idea in the first fucking place. Weeks after passing a bill allowing West Virginians to drink raw milk, one delegate brought the drink in to celebrate, and eventually, several lawmakers have gotten sick. Some lawmakers say it's just a coincidence, and it's a stomach bug going around, but now health officials are planning and looking into how this all started. Well, but here's the thing. What does pasteurization do? Kills all the microorganisms that's that might milk. say give you a stomach bug from drinking that milk yeah 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 yep 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 i just i kind of we're speaking of being bitten on the ass here because you know I, I i can't help but feel just a little well you got exactly what you fucking wanted didn't you yeah you got exactly what you wanted, and how'd that work out? You haven't been off the toilet for a week. Hope you're happy. Yeah. You're having, having a whole lot of fun there. Your stomach wants to murder you now. That's... It's just... Uh, it frustrates me so much that this, this whole deregulation, deregulate everything... Because regulation is at its... You regulate everything except what women do with their uteruses. Well, of course. What is, how, how did Dan Savage put it? They want, they want government just small enough to fit up your vagina. Oh. Uh, because it's... I just, I, I just kind of love the little ironies. The little... Yeah. The little, little tiny... The universe's way of going, you're stupid, fuck you. Yeah, you know what, anyone getting pissy, oh, you're being political, guess what, I'm human, I have opinions. They have been getting mad at us for that lately. If you don't like it, go have your own. It's you America. Ago, someone said something like my political rants were getting exhausting. Oh no. Let's talk a little bit about where, you know, how else the deregulation is, is affecting us. The, the FDA has been getting cut and cut and cut and cut over the years to the point where they don't have nearly enough inspectors to cover everyone when it comes to inspecting our food. Which should really make you super comfortable about things. So you remember I was telling you about the whole Rice Krispies? Um, no. Yeah. Tara? Tara, I'm just, I'm... Man, video shows man urinating on <sighs> Kellogg's cereal conveyor belt. Ew. Video is surface of a man urinating on a conveyor belt at a Kellogg fact facility in Tennessee. Video was taken in 2014, but Kellogg was unaware of it until Saturday. Products that could have been contaminated include Rice Krispies Treats, Rice Krispies Treat Cereal, and, quote, puffed rice cake products. Wait, there's a Rice Krispie Treat Cereal? Yeah. They make the Rice Krispies into Rice Krispies Treats, and then they make it back into cereal. Why? I don't know. That's disgusting. I don't know. Here's the kicker to this. By now, these items are past their expiration dates, which means they were likely already eaten by people who had no idea this happened. Oh. So we don't have to stop eating them now. Like, the damage is done. So if you, in the past two years... Have eaten a Rice Krispie treat. Have consumed Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> Wouldn't that though? I mean, one of the things I don't so much love about Rice Krispie treats is with Rice Cris or Rice Krispies, I should say. Like, once you pour milk over Rice Krispies, you have approximately forty-five seconds to eat that whole fucking bowl before it turns to gelatinous mush. Well. Presumably, they could dry out again, I guess. So once you... In no, because then it turns into mortar. Then you can fucking build a house with that well, shit. Well, it's a Rice Krispies treat. So already... So 
by introducing liquid into the situation, wouldn't you fucking disintegrate the light Rice Krispie treats? Apparently like, not. I feel like you would notice. Computer Ronin says, who peed in your cornflakes? That guy. Holy. I don't think the structural integrity would hold up. This, this is, all right. Not only did this guy pee in everyone's fucking Rice Krispies, but he took a video of it. How did they not know about it until now? Uh. I don't, I just, it, oh my God. This is one of those things. Honestly, the ones you buy pre-made aren't nearly as good as ones you make yourself. And oh. I'm obviously too lazy to make Rice Krispie treats at home, but they're way better if you make them yourself. Like the ones you buy always taste a little stale anyway. People are like, we got video. No, fuck, we don't. I ain't showing you video of a guy being on Rice Krispies. There are plenty of websites out there. You can see video of people peeing on Rice Krispies. You they can see people peeing one. on whatever you want. They ain't this site. We ain't that kind of site, kids. I'm sorry. Now, if you want videos of people blowing up balloons for sexual pleasure, we are your place. Peeing on stuff, that's not our oeuvre. So, um... Did I, I say blowing up balloons or popping balloons? Because pop. I meant popping, but I feel like I might have said blowing up. You said blowing up. Oh, I meant popping. I guess people probably blow up balloons for pleasure, too. Who knows? Everything's a fetish somewhere. So I've, I've long complained about this practice that's happening, that of putting the, the Internet of Things, which is a, uh, attaching Internet smart devices to things that really don't need them. Don't need them. Like, like the refrigerator. Yeah, which gets hacked. Yeah. And televisions, which get hacked. And light yeah. bulbs. Light bulbs. Why would your light bulb need a so you can, connection? You can control that. You can dim it and change the colors of it remotely on your smartphone. I don't think that's necessary. I, I mean, just get the clapper. Well, part of the problem with the Internet of Things is that they have these grand ideas and no fucking security. And a hacker, well, I, I guess you would call him, a, they call him a hacker in the headline. Really, all he is is a Linux developer. But everything's a hacker now. Yeah, I know. It, like, remember when Sarah Palin's email got hacked? Somebody just... Because somebody on fucking Reddit guessed her, her password questions yeah, that's hacking. based on her Wikipedia page? That's not hacking. Well... <laughs> that's not the same thing. Apparently, a hotel had decided to wire their lights in the hotel system to internet controls so you could remotely turn them on and off using a very, very simple method just by connecting to the, inter the, the hotel's internet network. He figured out that he hotel could... Hotel rooms are like 70 square feet. How fucking lazy do you have to be? He figured out that he could control the lights of every ho of every room in the hotel. And to make it even worse, he could control specific lights because the IP addresses oh God. in the hotel matched individual rooms. For example, he was in room 714. The IP address was 172.16.20714. <laughs> so if he had gone to 715, the person next door to him would be calling a young priest and an old priest because the lights would be going on and off. Did I ever tell you about the guy I dated who had the serial killer house? No, I don't. I, I dated a guy for very short time. time. Inherited his grandparents house after his grandmother passed away his grandfather was apparently both an electrician and a crazy person because every single room in the house had a switch plate this big with like 20 light switches on it i'm not kidding you every single room had this enormous fucking switch plate with 
light switches. You could control every light in the house from every room in the house. The problem was none of them were labeled. <laughs> so you didn't know which switch was for the room you were in or which switch was for another room. And I was at his house and I was in one room and like, I think I was like in the bathroom and he shut off the lights in there just to mess with me. And I'm like, that's, that's a serial killer house. Like, <laughs> that's a creepy thing to do to a house. Why would you do that if not to do horrible shit to people? How do you even wire that? And like, but none of them were labeled. So like, he, he had trouble navigating this house because he, it, you would have to take, like, it would take you all fucking day to turn on the light. Oh, I didn't date him for very long. There was also like 30 year old moonshine in the cabinet in the kitchen that he actually drank. And I was like, you're going to die. This whole this whole Internet of Things is is wouldn't this be a neat idea? Someone else go do it and do it on a budget. That's a razor thin budget. So we just want it to work. We don't care if it's secure or not. I don't even understand why it's a necessary idea. Because, well, you could control your house when you're not home. And if you're not home, you could turn on the lights. And people but in a hotel, like, what's the biggest hotel room you've ever been in? Not very big. Exactly. Like, a, like uh, maybe a suite or something. And that's maybe 100 square feet. Maybe, yeah. So, really? You need this? I just, it. well, even not even needing it, if you're going to do it, secure it properly. Because all it took was a Linux developer, an Ethernet cable, and some spare time. And he fucking unraveled your, your, you know, deep, your incredibly ingenious idea. That is, however, a great device to have if you have a legendary haunted hotel and want to, like, keep up, keep ramping up business. Fucking with the lights in random rooms at random times. Oh yeah. I would yeah, I would be I would wait for the guy next door. Okay. I would put like a glass to the door. I would turn off his lights. I would listen for him to get up, walk over the light switch, and turn it back on before he gets there. And to see how many times I could make him go, God damn it. That's a that's a few different levels of creepy. Though, <laughs> just dick with the guy, you know? God damn it! And the thing is, in a hotel, like, you're... You are already giving up a certain level of your own security. You are not in your natural habitat. You are kind of at the mercy of this hotel staff, you know? Like, you are giving up a certain amount of your equilibrium to stay in a different place. And... The last thing you need is somebody dicking with hello bits of it. Because I I know just enough about computers and have no free time have have too much free time to be able to have fun with shit like this. So basically, you should not be allowed to bring a laptop to a con ever again. I should not be allowed to bring a laptop anywhere. But no. Well, let's go from one sort of hotel nightmare to a completely different one. And this one is totally in our wheelhouse because the headline alone has got us written all over it. Rampaging naked man. There it is. Taken into custody at gunpoint. Who doesn't love a good old fashioned naked rampage? We need one of those signs. You know how workplaces have signs like it has been this many days without an incident? <laughs> You need thing. like a, it's been this many episodes without a, a naked, naked rampage. rampage. You know, yeah. And I don't think it would ever get above three. York County, Pennsylvania, a bizarre incident involving a rampaging naked man ends with his arrest at gunpoint by an off duty police officer. The incident began around 6 20 p.m. at the Motel 6. Northern York County Regional responded to a call for a naked man on the third floor of the motel causing a commotion. Before police arrived at the scene, the man jumped from a third floor balcony, landed on the windshield of a car in the motel parking lot. The suspect then ran into a convenience store. He was able to run after that? Yes. Inside the store. Inside I the just arrived from the future? 
<laughs> Inside the store, the man caused general mayhem, throwing items around the store. The suspect then ran out in the parking lot and began pulling on the car door of a female customer. The woman remained locked in her door car, screaming for help. All right, it wasn't Wolverine, because if naked Hugh Jackman was pulling on your door, you'd let him in. I'd at least ask him, Hugh, where's your pants, man? I'd at least have to have to ask. I'd probably let him in. Do you want, do you, do, do you think he's got the same kind of, of, you know, he's got those. Do you think he's got the same kind of manscaping? Absolutely. You know, yeah, just like a matching. Totally. Just, um, an off-duty member of law enforcement community heard the woman scream for help and intervened. He ordered the man to the ground at gunpoint. The suspect was sentenced to with the help of two other private citizens. So it took three people and a gun to make this guy stop. And here I was ready to say, I'm not going to be impressed with a naked guy in a hotel unless he has the hose to a fire extinguisher shoved up the, his ass like that one time. Well, <laughs> jumped three stories and kept... It's I like, stand corrected. It's like it's like David. It's like Bruce Fire Banner. Fire extinguisher guy, balls in your court. It's like Bruce Banner forgot to turn into the Hulk. Is what know. happened? It's like you know. I'm now wondering if Wolverine can send one of his blades out via his dick. No. Lazuka. I feel like that would have come up by now. No yeah. pun intended. Yeah. That. Yeah. That. No. That's. He does not. Have, what, what is what is wrong with you? Seriously. <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. Y'all, y'all, y'all need Jesus. Really, if you're asking, it's, don't, don't, don't dwell on the dicks of the fictional. Don't do it. Maybe like don't. the shitty Ryan, the shitty version of Deadpool they used in Wolverine Origins would have like a katana that comes out of his dick. Well, because that's I just, the crap they would do. What did I just say? The character. What What were the words? Because did... I mean, they had three foot katanas come out of his arms, which would make it impossible to bend your arms. So I feel like they'd be dumb enough to put what a katana did I... a dick. What the fuck did I just say, Tara? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of zoned out. The words just keep... Uh... I was thinking about Ryan Reynolds having a katana dick and... I've got to hand it to this guy. This is some determined crazy. I can't believe he jumped out of a third story window onto a car and just got up and kept running. Through the wind. He landed on the windshield and just kept going. Like, that's definitely something out of a Wolverine movie. And you know what the real crime here is? The guy go. The guy is in the fucking convenience store, and he does not say, "I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle." <laughs> Come on, it's perfect, and just that's a moment you let you waste. Imagine if that happened to you, <laughs> like what would you even do? Just right, that was uh, that would be my first. I would fucking applaud right then and there. Tara lives in her own place, Tara Land. I want to go there. Grady, Do you? Grady does not like applause. He's yelling at me now. He's like, ah! Uh -huh. Stop making loud noises! What? Human. What? What is it, Grady? You're making loud noises. I'm trying to sleep. It's, it's... Tired. Oh, that, I'm just... It, it took three people to bring his ass in. That's impressive. <clears throat> I, I guess I guess the first thing we learned tonight is it, don't forget to turn into the Hulk. Yeah. Because otherwise, that shit's just embarrassing. Yeah. Always remember to turn into the Hulk. It because yeah, you, or you go on a rampage. You've got to yeah, because otherwise you're just you're just a naked guy, and no, you're just a naked guy. Yeah. We've learned just because you can put something on the internet doesn't mean you should put something on the internet. Not everything needs to be on the fucking internet. No. I still don't understand why your fridge needs to connect to the internet. There's going to be... There, there, like your fridge is going to tell you you're out of milk. If you don't know you're out of milk, how much milk do you really use? Right. If you don't know you're out of milk, like how useful is that information to you? I know when I'm out of Pepsi. 
because I mainline that shit. I don't need my fridge to tell me I'm out of Pepsi. I'm aware. We've learned that uh, there is, in fact, an answer to who peed in your cornflakes. You won't like it, but we have an answer. Do you think they go snap, crackle, pop when you pee on them? <laughs> We've learned that, that deregulation is not always the answer. No. Especially when sometimes it'll come right around and bite you in the ass. We've learned your getaway driver must be invested in your caper. Really should be in on the action. It should not be an unsuspecting stranger trying to earn some money. Because if they're not... You're, you're, you're an asshole and you're going to get caught. Because they don't need none of your shit in their life. And finally, we've learned tonight, it is in fact possible for God to hand you your own ass. And he will. In a roundabout way. but If you ask him to, he will. He'll do it. Because, you know, this bastard, it's, he's going to, every sermon now, every sermon, it's going to be, hey, can you tell us about the time they sewed your butt back on? It's going to be every Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith, charity, peace. I got it. Tell us about when they sewed your butt back on. Tell us about that time. It's, you thought God made you the beast master. <laughs> <laughs>